Let's continue our exploration of machine learning topics by looking at natural language processing. Uh, so far we've looked at image classification through a few different techniques and we've talked a little bit about application development, but now we're going to take a look at natural language processing and how we can uh, use this, or at least start to understand how we can use this to extract meaning or actually uh, look at text and try to interpret it. So uh, what natural language processing is, is more or less it's combining several different um, different approaches basically we have uh, linguistics so if you think about language language has rules um, you know the things that we say like in English you expect to have a subject and a predicate and then there are details within there you know within the subject and predicate you have uh, you know you have um, you have proper nouns you have uh, direct objects you have all of these different pieces of, uh, of the language and they follow some certain rules most of the time um, you also have computational techniques and statistical t techniques as well as machine learning techniques that that allow computers to uh, process human language. Uh, probably don't want to use the word understand here, but you know, be able to uh, to extract some meaning from human language. Uh, so some basic things you can do with natural language processing. Uh, one is tokenize inputs. So take text and actually build that into the pieces of text. You know, so a sentence is made up of words. Uh, you know, being able to identify things like contractions as a single word as opposed to you know that and then an s. You know, for that's. Um, and you know, also identifying punctuation or other pieces. Though sometimes you don't want to tokenize all of your inputs because uh, there's meaning in in those relationships. So um, you know, being able to separate your text into tokens sometimes loses some of the meaning. You know, for example, you may have two words that are close together that have meaning in one way, but um, you know, don't have necessarily relay the same meaning when they're separate or considered individually. Uh, NLP can identify the parts of speech in a sentence, uh, can try to classify the sentiment of a sentence. Is it positive or is it negative? Uh, you know, this is good for if you're trying to understand is, you know, is a, is a message a complaint or is it praise? Um, you can use it for clustering or latent semantic indexing. So latent semantic indexing is basically this idea that we're trying to identify the meaning of words based on other contextual words that are nearby. For example, if you see um, like the word pirate, you probably would believe that that has something to do with pirates maybe in the 16th, you know, 17th, 18th century, uh, privateers, you know, on the, on the uh, sea. But if you see Pittsburgh nearby that word, then that probably means that this is something related to baseball and it's referring to the Pittsburgh Pirates. So those, you know, that sort of uh, approach of trying to identify what the, the meaning is. You also see nowadays uh, natural language generation. So there are a lot of different chatbots. There are a lot of different uh, systems that can generate language. And we're going to explore some of those and we're going to look in detail at some of those later in this course. So if you go back, uh, you know, probably 20, 25 years ago, a lot of what NLP was was mostly rules and heuristics. Uh, the idea of neural networks is is not brand new, but you know I think it's it's probably something that has happened recently. A lot of what you saw in NLP prior to this was around how do we take a bunch of text? How do we understand probabilities related to that text? How do we um, how do we apply the rules of language? How do we identify how language might operate? How do we how do we try to determine you know using statistical and probabilistic methods uh, what sentences are about? Um, we also nowadays are probably using a lot more machine learning and artificial intelligence when it comes to uh, natural language processing. So historically, um, you know, like I said, you had a lot of rules you had manually produced, you know, um, created by hand type of rules that were programmed over time. Um, statistical models, computational power, you know, at some point the models got better, computational power continues to increase. So you, this, allowed, uh, this allowed engineers and researchers to create more capable probabilistic approaches to understanding text. Then uh, engrams was a, were a development where engrams are basically this idea that you take a sequence of n words and if you think about this, you know, if you could did it take um, a single author uh, in one of their books, you could look at the sequence of words and uh, through the entirety of that text, if you could identify all of the times a sequence of words occurred, you could very easily predict what the next word was in a sequence. So you could very easily understand where the sentence was going based 
based on that writer's style. So if you look at something like the entirety of the internet, you can actually get very good at predicting how human language is going to work. So this is where engrams come in. An engram is basically a sequence of n words uh, that you know we're going to use for some kind of capability pr to predict the context or the, uh, the, the words in that sequence. Um, and then more recently, like I said, neural networks have improved what we can do with natural language processing. Uh, an interesting example, I just came across this. This uh, is a New Jersey, Institute, uh, Tech, uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology uh, page. Um, there's this system called ELISA. It was a very early version of uh, natural language processing. It was built to mimic a therapist, and you can take a look at it. You know, If you ask it a question, it's probably just going to reflect your words back to you. But even that requires some sophistication because you have to think about how this particular system is going to understand that sentence, how it's going to understand context, and then how to actually repeat that back to you. Um, so even in this case, you know, you can see this is a pretty weird example, but by asking it a question, it just sort of says, you know, how do you feel about this? What do you think is the perspective? So uh, very much in the way a stereoty stereotypical therapist might actually uh, handle some of your problems and questions. So you can take a look at that. Uh, I'll put the link in the uh, description for the video as well. So if you want to get into some basics with natural language processing, some common Python frameworks and libraries, uh, NLTK allows you to pre-process text so that you can uh, analyze it with ML models. So basically like taking your, your text and uh, packaging it, um, you know, identifying, you know, tokenization, uh, these types of practices so that you can then put that into, uh, you know, training or use that as an input for a training model. Um, Spacey can be used for processing and understanding the meaning that you have in text. Um, GenSim is, is more for, you know, understanding what the topic is, like what's the, 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 the semantic value of the text, like what is this text about? And these are all pretty simple, straightforward frameworks that you can take a look at. Um, and you can use NLP to accomplish a variety of different purposes. You can detect spam, you know, classify text into, you know, reasonable message and spam message or you know classify text in other ways you can use it for language translation and there have been a lot of big uh, developments in language translation recently where uh, you know using na neural networks and the latest NLP techniques we can do much better than uh, sort of the rules-based uh, language translation that happened previously um, you can use content summaries so this is something that's becoming more popular if you have a you know a page of text or you have a, a conversation in chat being able to summarize that content can allow people to catch up on a conversation i've seen some chat tools that do this now where you know if there's a, a thread and it's maybe 20 30 40 different exchanges it just summarizes everything that happened in a few sentences and that can be kind of a, a useful uh, useful application um, you can interpret intent using nlp so what is the purpose of a particular passage or, or section of text uh, Speech recognition is obviously commonplace nowadays. You know, we don't, we don't even think about it with uh, Alexa and Google Home and other tools like this. Um, and then speech to text, being able to write out words and have a computer speak them. Uh, there, this is some. This is an area that's gotten much, much more sophisticated over the last. Uh, 20 years or so. Um, this was something you know in Microsoft Word. I remember. I think it was Microsoft Word. 2003 maybe uh, 2000 somewhere early you could have it say words but it sounded like a robot saying them now uh, if you if you use a speech to text program it not only handles how to pronounce things but also you know how to how to keep a sentence flowing so there's a lot of understanding that goes into that you know if you think about the the historical context there that's pretty impressive and then you know chatbots are something in, in conversational uh, assistance or something that you see more and more of uh, so you know being able to ask questions and you know reference refer to things as that you know for example um it's it's one it's one effort to write an application that allows you to say uh you know what's the the capital of washington state for example but then being able to say how many people live there well what's there now you're trying to tie the context of multiple uh, multiple phrases and sentences together. So this chat can be pretty impressive as, as far as remembering that context and being able to interpret your intent. So a lot of more sophisticated uh, applications of NLP recently. So you can try this a couple of ways. Um, the slides will be linked, so you can click on all of these links within the slides, but you know you can take a look at uh, Kaggle's getting started with NLP. We're gonna explore an example or two in Vertex AI, and we'll also take a look at a, an example in TensorFlow. And then there are also language, large language models out there you know, that you can either interact with today, or you can start at, use as a starting point for your own natural language processing uh, applications. So hopefully this is a good overview of, of natural language processing um, 
obviously a very deep topic. You could spend years and study only natural language processing and computational linguistics, but hopefully this will, uh, hopefully this will help you to, to understand where we're going with the next couple of lessons, and thank you for watching.